The condenser, it is a heat exchanger. The refrigerant usually comes in from the top, gives up its heat and exits from the bottom. What is the state of the refrigerant leaving the condenser? It is imperative that the condenser has a good airflow. There should be no missing air seals, fan shrouds, especially the bottom fan shroud. And it should have a properly operating fan. There are many ways to clean the condenser. A very effective method is to use a brush and a vacuum cleaner. You can test the efficiency of the condenser by comparing its inlet temperature to its outlet temperature. This is known as the temperature drop test. The setup is the same as the performance test outlined in video number one. Use a contact thermometer. Here we're using an infrared pyrometer. It works about the same to gather the temperatures. The outlet should be 20 to 50 degrees F cooler than the inlet. This condenser has seen better days, but it is still functioning as it should. When replacing the condenser, first recover the refrigerant. You might need wrenches, sockets, or a spring lock disconnect tool. And you remove a few bolts holding it down. Before installing the new one, you will need to add oil to it. The service procedure for this vehicle calls for one fluid ounce of PAG 46. Use some of that oil to lightly lubricate the new O-rings. The dryer element also needs to be replaced. This is a fixed orifice tube system. It has an accumulator dryer. The service procedure calls for 3.5 fluid ounces of PAG 46 whenever you change that accumulator dryer. The dryer element is always installed last. Here's a review of the dryer elements used in the two major systems. The accumulator dryer is used in orifice tube systems. It is located at the outlet of the evaporator. Contains low pressure, low temperature vapor. The receiver dryer is used in thermal expansion valve systems. It is located after the condenser. Contains high pressure, high temperature liquid. Through port service procedures, the dryer element could become saturated. This can cause a blockage at the dryer element because the water will freeze up. When the system is evacuated, the moisture in the desiccant is not removed. The dryer must be replaced. Service valves can leak. Use a halogen leak detector on service valves to easily check for leaks. This example is a GM ball valve that has an obvious leak. In this style, you would replace the entire part. but most of the time you can just replace the core. The 609 certification expected you to know the sizes of the couplers. The A7 might ask you about them too. Here's a chart for R134A and R1234YF. Last up, the evaporator. To check its airflow, you simply run the blower on high. Yeah, we're getting decent airflow. A common cause of poor airflow is a dirty cabin air filter. When the refrigerant passes through the evaporator, it absorbs the heat of the airflow and begins to boil. We then get cold and dehumidified air in the cabin. But the inlet and outlet of the evaporator are cold to the touch. How is that possible? It's possible because R134A boils at negative 15.3 degrees F and R1234YF boils at negative 22 degrees F. If the evaporator is flooded with refrigerant, you'll have poor cooling due to poor superheating of the refrigerant. If the evaporator is starved, the refrigerant boils too quickly and you'll have poor cooling. Replacing the evaporator is similar to replacing the condenser. The major issue is getting to the evaporator itself. 
Most of the time, you'll need to remove the dash in order to get to the evaporator housing. That's it for this video. Tune in to video number four. We'll talk about the cooling system.